I believe it is a Saturday, and I know normally you would see Coach Jess here. She will be back on next week. Today is an open session in which we have a special guest. Uh, many of you already know who she is, and for the rest of you, you're about to find out. So let's go ahead and get Darlene in. We're going to talk about narcissism and a whole lot more for about 45 minutes to an hour. Feel free to put your comments and questions in for her right now. Enough of me. Let's get to Darlene. Hi. We did it. <laughs> I'm in here somewhere. Hold on one second. Um, you look fantastic, man. I, I should I should have shaved my legs for this one. I'm not I'm not really ready here. I should have put on a different shirt. Uh, let me get in here. Let me get in here. How are you? Oh, good, good. <laughs> okay, I can hear you there. I can hear you there. We're gonna go ahead and stop this. Uh, stop that music there like that. I have a number of questions that people have sent me, and uh, we're still sending me. Uh, so um, we're only going to be able to get to so many of them and certain ones. Uh, hopefully you can hear me comfortably over there, Darlene, and we're all good to go. Oh, I hear you. Uh, that's good. Everybody's starting to come in right now. We got Terry here. Uh, Boodle's Art Gallery is here. Um, um, we got uh, Kathleen is here. Uh, that looks like uh, let me. I'm looking at the wrong screen. Let me look over here. It's much bigger because I'm blind. Uh, Alla is here. Uh, by the way, everybody, if it's your first time coming through, feel free to use a, a, a name, uh, either yours or uh, a name that you make up so that I don't have to always read uh, the Instagram logo that you have. Um, and feel free to ask any question that you want to. Uh -huh. Any question that you want. Feel free to ask that question uh, of Darlene today. We'll try to get to it. If she doesn't uh, if she doesn't get to it uh, within this particular live chat, uh, you can join us. We got another event that we're going to do together on the 2nd of October, uh, which will be opened up to a lot more people. Hopefully that will be uh, on our YouTube channel. Uh, um, and Darlene will be our first uh, live guest there. Um, there are a number of questions that I have here in front of me, and I have a few that uh, uh, a few other extra things here. Uh, but right now, the first question, Darlene, if you don't mind, uh, could you please tell everyone your website? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Two. One is DarleneLancer.com, just my name. <clears throat> and then I have another one called WhatIsCodependency.com. And the banner actually is a, a, a slideshow of how to recover from codependency. And there's uh, almost 200 blogs on there. About half of them are on narcissism. So... There's, and there's a whole media page with a lot of podcasts and webinars, and uh, there's a lot of educational material, and of course my books. So right now, uh, I do want to segue to that. Uh, you have uh, how many books? I think there's nine. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, I was going to say eight, but I'm glad I did say it. You said okay, so nine. There's uh, two paperbacks, including a second edition of uh, Codependency for Dummies. I'm working yeah. on right. now. And uh, Conquering Shame and Codependency, those are the paperbacks. And then uh, I have, I think, seven uh, e-books. And uh, wow. dealing with a narcissist, how to raise your self-esteem and set boundaries with difficult people. So it's not just for narcissists. It's like if you have a, a relationship with an addict or someone with another personality disorder, like borderline, it would be very helpful. And uh, this winter, I'm coming out with a paperback called uh, Dating, Loving, and Leaving a Narcissist. So, right. And I was going to work my way to that, the, the dating, loving, and leaving, right? A narcissist. Did I, right? I repeated that, right? Now, um, that, uh, your blog, you have uh, over 200 blogs. Uh, you have, please correct me now if I say these wrong. I, I know I took notes during our show prep, but I'll make sure I got this right. Daughters of Narcissists, is that correct? Am I saying that right? Dar daughters of Narcissistic Mothers. Okay. One, uh, sons of Narcissistic Mothers and Sons of Narcissistic Fathers. Wow. Okay. All right. Uh, lift, uh, so people are able to get something that will lift their, their self-esteem, raise their self-esteem. 
self-esteem and help them be assertive uh, essentially is what they can do. Your Instagram page uh, is very hard to remember. I just don't know how to remember. <laughs> so your Instagram page is, you go ahead and tell everybody because it's so difficult for me to remember. What is your Instagram page? So they can go like, comment, share, and follow. Go ahead. Darlene Lancer. And then my, um, my license, LMFT, which stands for Licensed Marriage and Family Therapist. Right. Okay. So uh, everyone, please make sure you like, comment, share, follow Darlene. Um, show your support. Please don't embarrass me. Don't have her come on the show. And then you guys don't follow her. I have to come find each and every all, almost all 4,000 4, of you. So you guys need to be uh, going to her page even as we speak, please. And by the way, if you go to her page while the show is going on, please let us know that you, you're following her right now. Let Darlene know that uh, during the show, because I see you putting hearts up on the screen and everybody keep those coming. But well, also let us you know if you're not following her now, please go do it right now. Yes, what? I didn't know what that was. People are sending hearts. That's lovely. Yes. <laughs> you oh. thought that was just, that, that was my hair just falling off my head and going across <laughs> the screen. <laughs> Um, emoji or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so Darlene, look, our first yeah. one, the, the PAC coach, uh, that's the pain, uh, anger, and confusion coach. She, she, she works with people with those areas. She just mentioned she's following. And the second one, Boodle's Art Gallery. She just said that, that she's following. So, uh, okay, so this is everybody, please. Uh, if you are watching right now, most of you, the majority, you already know who I am. This is Darlene. I've been waiting to have her on the show. Please, she's back on Instagram now. So go show your love. Some of you have already done it. Uh, the Pack Coach uh, Boodle's Art Gallery. Let us know during the show that you can just, you know, click it, you guys. Come on, just hit the follow button and uh, go ahead and type it in and let us know that you're following her even as we're doing the show. Uh, I can't. Disclaimer, and that is that before I had another um, Instagram profile. Yeah. And when people would follow me, I'd follow them back and send them a message. And yeah. for whatever reason, I don't know, the Instagram gods, like, knocked me off. <laughs> so now I'm afraid yeah. to follow anybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Hey, you know what? That's okay. As long as we will let you know we support you and follow you. Uh, matter of fact, uh, Boodle's Art Gallery is saying, so glad. I'm looking at the wrong screen. Let me go over my bigger one. It says, so glad you're here, Darlene. So, um, And others uh, have followed you. So any of you that are joining now, please, if you're not following uh, Darlene, she is back on Instagram now. Of course, you can follow her on other avenues. Uh, her website, of course, is available to you. But uh, please show your support uh, to her. She is now back on Instagram. And uh, today I am honored to have you with us now. I can't keep Darlene all day, everybody. So we're going to try to do 45 minutes to about an hour. Um, we're both kind of in the upright position here. <laughs> so she's standing. Uh, I will be standing off and on, uh, so we're not going to be able to stand all day. But we're going to answer a bunch of questions here real quick. Throw in some of yours, but please write down the date, October 2nd. Uh, Darlene and I have another project uh, that we will be doing, and many of you will be able to attend, uh, hopefully up to 500 people or more. Uh, you'll be able to attend and see uh, Darlene again, which she's going to answer a bunch of questions. I need to get to what we got here. Um, first one. Here we go. First question concerning narcissism. Why do we ignore red flags is one of the questions that I have here. Ah, that's a really good question. Well, there's several reasons. One is uh, people tend to idealize uh, narcissists. First of all, they're very charming and uh, they have a big personality and they can be very seductive and bragging and and uh, people get uh, charmed by their charisma. In fact, research showed that it took seven meetings uh, with the narcissist for people to catch on to their darker side. And it's because up until then, they liked the person. So they're very good at manipulating and hiding who they are. Another reason is if you had a parent that was a narcissist or a similar personality, that might be what we call uh, psychologically transference. So you're kind of projecting uh, a parent onto this person and feels familiar. Some of the family uh, dynamics might be similar. Like if you were very close with a, a father 
and maybe the narcissist was very close with their mother. And so that just feels like familiar. Um, and the, if there was any kind of seduction and manipulation in your family, you might not realize that. And you're just, again, it just feels like family. So those are s some of the main reasons. The other is that you're depressed. Uh, mm. You are more likely or most of the team, you're more, more likely to idealize someone, kind of put them on a pedestal. Mm. Another reason is that we are often attracted to someone who has traits that are undeveloped in ourselves or that we disown. Um, okay. since, um, typically codependents or anyone with low self-esteem is going to be tentative and not bold and maybe a, a pleaser or uh, hard for them to be goal-directed and take charge and be a leader. And then mm -hmm. they admire the traits they don't have in someone else. And it's almost as like our unconscious wants to incorporate that. So we're drawn to it. I mean, even if you want to be more creative than you are, you might be attractive to someone who's an artist and think, right. oh, that's really fantastic and overlook that they have a lot of personality problems. So that's so, just general. Uh, so I'm, I'm curious to ask then, Darlene, because you just made me think of something. So if, let's say it's me. So if I'm not really comfortable making decisions, for example, I could, I could fall for a narcissist who seems to be a decision maker. Maybe they're charming that way. And I could fall into to that mindset that I trust them more than my own decision making. Can that happen? Oh, for sure. Or that you, um, particularly women, would like to feel protective and that they can depend on a man and lean on a man. And codependents yes. basically have trouble making decisions. And that's a uh, reason for that, which I can go into. So if, you, if you're with someone who... Uh, says, well, I'm going to just, that's, I'm going to take you to this great restaurant and then we're going to go here. And that might feel like, oh, God, how fantastic. He's taking initiative and I yeah. can on him and he's going to protect me. But later on, you find out that's actually control, you know. Uh, so uh, rather than are you going to, um, you know, collaborate and decide where to go. So you might be, again, you might be seduced because Maybe this person is spending a lot of money on you, or they just Got like it. very, uh, you know, luxurious lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Well, then you go along with that, and then later you find out there's a downside. And that control can come in, and you just mentioned something there. You said the word seduce. So a person, male or female, they could end up being seduced into this, thinking, like you said, oh, they're they're making it, taking the initiative. Wow, that I find that very encouraging. But actually, later on there's a trap door that we could end up falling through because they're going to be more controlling then they're going to, they're going to show their true colors is what you're saying. Maybe later. They're picking places that they want to go. Maybe you, Oh, got it. A small intimate restaurant and they, they keep wanting to bring you to these five star big restaurants. You know, the flip side of that, um, for instance, someone who's codependent or could be a narcissist who wants to take care of you and they want to help you. And you think this is great. He's like, or she is like uh, bringing me chicken soup. <laughs> they're, they're fixing my house and they're doing all this. That's another way of control too. It's like pleasing and, but they're managing you and they're pretty soon they'll be telling you, you know, how to uh, change your life and rearrange your furniture. And, yeah. And yeah. So well, another trap. It's maybe not, it's a different kind of seduction. So looking out for the red flags has a lot to do with, us paying attention, yes, but you said up to seven times it could take before the true colors kind of show. Oh yeah, and um, oh. but I want to point out first of all that was not a dating situation. So Got it. Was, okay. So there's not you. idealization. So that mm -hmm. was just a, a people in a test uh, uh, environment. Um, but you were asking about red flags. I was addressing why we might fall for somebody. But the red flag of the narcissist, that's a, that's a different list. Oh, that's a whole different list. I think we better save that for October. Let's, let's save that one for October. We could, we could, was, we could tease the audience. Go ahead. No, you're going to say something. Go ahead. I was saying, I was actually listing our blind spots. I actually Got it. look it up. I have a blog called 
uh, like five red flags and blind spots. So okay. we have our blind spots, and then there's the red flags. You know. That's oh. Okay. Learn something new today. Okay. Consider that done. Hold on one second as I write that down. Okay. So second question. What is narcissistic abuse is a question that have been presented with. Okay. Well, abuse is abuse. So uh, there's other things that narcissists do, but any kind of uh, criticism and manipulation is abuse. Um, a narcissist was often rude to people, um, maybe taking things uh, and not returning them, being judgmental and critical, being demanding. And uh, narcissists have this sense of entitlement. So they might want to cut in line or expect favors um, and expect you to treat them like gods and uh, ignore your needs and your feelings. Uh, blame you. That's, they're really good at They will never take uh, an abuser, just in general, any kind of abuser, usually won't want to take responsibility. Mm -hmm. so they um, will project. I used the word before, projecting your family onto someone. Well, they will project their own um, flaws onto you. So okay. you're self-centered. They might even say you're to call you a narcissist. <laughs> wow. Call you selfish. You know, I had a narcissistic mother, and she used to say I was selfish. And I had so much shame around uh, asking for my needs. But later, I, you know, after some therapy, I realized she was selfish. Wow. So, get her way, she would say that I only, oh, I always want my way. <laughs> so, because I wasn't doing what she wanted. So it made it hard to become an individual. So, so uh, manipulation, another thing is isolation. So they might hmm. keep you from uh, therapy, keep you from your family, interrogate you about your friends and what you say to them. Uh, they might be very um, jealous uh, because they not because they love you, but because they want you. It's an ego thing. They don't want competition. Yeah. They might, um, you know, start telling you what to do and ordering you around and um, uh, being passive aggressive. So saying one thing and then doing another. Another thing is gaslighting, where they lie and try to undermine your perceptions and deny it. you may make an agreement with them and then they say well i never agreed to that mm -hmm. and you think like it's your fault if you for instance you find on their phone something like they're cheating so mm -hmm. this is typical so and then then the conversation turns on how dare you look at my phone and they'll start <laughs> and belittling you and just slam you with a lot of attacks so now you, you they're the victim. This is typical with the blaming. They switch places, and now they're the victim, and they go into self-pity, and it's all your fault. So those are uh, – I have uh, people email me uh, at info at darlinglancer.com. You can also get that on my website. Uh, a list of uh, about 40 or 50 um, – it's called a narcissistic che – checklist of narcissistic traits. So there's mental abuse, there's withholding, withholding money, withholding sex, uh, with blocking you, like that's like a physical thing where they block you. So of course there's physical abuse, but a lot of narcissists aren't violent, <clears throat> but beware because uh, violence is always preceded by emotional abuse. And then uh, financial abuse, sexual abuse, just their selfishness might be so extreme that it's abusive. So, and these things escalate. So the emotional, the financial abuse, the sexual abuse are things that happen, as you said, they may not be normally violent, but it can escalate and possibly get that way then? It could. I mean, I don't want to say that narcissists are violent. Not necessarily. It's an individual thing. But okay. hey, a lot of people are, and I have a YouTube up on um, emotional abuse. Uh, a lot of people are in denial about abuse. First of all, there's so much emotional, verbal abuse in the media that people don't even realize, like when they're constantly criticized, that that's abusive. Um, but physical abuse is not just being hit 
it's also being uh, breaking your phone, throwing things, punching walls. Yep. That's considered yeah. um, physical violence, pulling yeah. your things like that. That that physical intimidation, or literally that hands-on physical intimidation. So throwing things. Uh, you mentioned punching the wall, uh, things like that. Pulling of the hair. Intimidation. That's a uh, uh, a prime example of abuse, because mm -hmm. they don't touch you. All they have to do is scare you. Because basically, they're interested in power, so they don't have to hit you to make you subordinate to them and make you afraid of them. They can belittle you and demean you and criticize you, so you just lose any confidence in yourself and your perception. So, so they undermine. So so does that involve like bringing up the past constantly, um, telling they, friends the shortcomings, stuff like that? Well, they, they have a sixth sense of your weakness. Oh, so okay. Since if you are very sensitive about your looks or mm -hmm. some part of your body, you know, mm -hmm. uh, they, they'll, they'll know that that's your a weakness or wow. say that you are had an abusive father and mm -hmm. uh, you don't want to be like your father and then your girlfriend mm -hmm. well now you're just you're just like your father ouch so, yeah or you know or that codependents typically um you know have guilt and shame around their needs or selfishness so you know they'll manipulate you and say oh you're so selfish you know so then you then you feel shamed and then you go along with what they say. You think it's all your fault. So. I have to. Uh, I have to highlight something here. Let's see here. I think you're getting some uh, support on the screen. The pack coach says, "Not in touch with our intuition. Can that be a reason why we may not catch a red flag right away?" Is essentially what she was asking earlier. Um, any thoughts on that? Yes, I think that's. True. <laughs> Just, oh, the, okay. Yeah. That is the shortest answer. I have no. ever had. It, that was really good. Go ahead. Part, part to it. So, and I'm guilty of this myself. You may have an intuition, but then you override it. Now, so how that, do wait? No. Okay. So, explain that part for some who may not understand. Are they new on this journey of dealing with narcissists? They just googled it. Googled it. And now they're they're watching this show. What is what does that mean? You override it. So you hear that little voice, that little warning, and then. You just don't pay attention because maybe you're really attracted to this man or maybe you're lonely or you're, you're a man and you think that this woman's really hot and you're, or you yeah. mm -hmm. like the woman you've been looking for. So even though you, you saw something, so now we're getting into what I call denial. Uh -huh. So, and that's a big symptom of codependency. So there's denial doesn't mean that you're just oblivious. It, it also could be you minimize, you rationalize. Well, this person just, they had a rough day or something, or maybe I provoke them, or uh, they didn't mean it. They apologize or whatever. Or, although actually a narcissist will rarely apologize. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, that's kind of rare, huh? But, um, but some can be actually very manipulative and uh, pretend to be good listeners and very interested in you in the beginning, you know. But um, going back to overriding your intuition. So there could be just your need, need for a relationship. Uh, and I, I've talked to, for instance, uh, women who had uh, past experience with someone who cheated. And then mm -hmm. they met someone who said that they cheated on their wow. girlfriend or wife, but they just, I don't know, they rationalized that they were having so much fun with this narcissist that they just thought, oh, they thought, well, you know, this is just going to be fun. And then they get hooked in. Um, so those are some reasons, again, the idealization, sexual attraction. So, and there's another thing that I want to bring up. And that is uh, when you have an abusive parent, or a narcissistic parent, um, mm -hmm. or if you've been sexually abused or had violence at some time in your past. When you're around someone who's an abuser, 
or mm -hmm. like pulling, <clears throat> you might feel uncomfortable in your body and you'll mistake that as excitement. Oh. Uh. So you think, you know, oh, I'm so nervous around him or her. Mm -hmm. I get butterflies or something. I'm so excited. You know, you really need to check in with yourself. And if you're not comfortable with someone, that's not a good sign. No. In fact, no. a lot of people that date narcissists, when they feel comfortable around someone, they think they're, they feel bored. So someone <laughs> who is oh, wow. attached, they think this person's boring because they're not feeling that intensity. Rush. Excitement. Yeah. That excitement is often a sign from your body that you're not safe. And a lot of people that date narcissists for any length of time, um, they don't, they're not used to feeling safe. Not feeling safe is familiar. The, the, actual, the actual being uncomfortable becomes what is familiar, and they think that, well, if I don't feel that, that, that that's really love. That's really the butterflies. And actually, it's not. It's our nervous system telling us you're dealing with something that, that's not good for you. You're dealing with something that's bad for you. Yeah. And see if you could talk about it. What's making, and figure out what's making. If the person is touching you too soon, moving too quickly physically, mm -hmm. um, maybe criticized you and you didn't really even notice it, um, or was acting arrogant. So mm. somehow making you feel um, intimidated, small, small, and you belittling. Be, yeah. Well, it might be very subtle. It might not be overt. Just maybe question. Okay. I don't know. In some way, I can't think of an example. And then you're kind of watching what you're saying. Well, that's not a good sign. No, that's never a good sign. Yeah. yeah. Well, when when you, when you can't speak freely, it's not a good sign. Mm -hmm. But you might. What, just, what, I think, well, I just, I feel like a teenager, you know, I'm just so attracted to the person. <laughs> yeah, and actually, it's your body telling you, you need to run. This is, this is an abusive person. I, I can just feel it. Yeah. And instead, we're thinking something different. I got to tell you also on the screen, um, it also says they can invest in you for later. So I guess that means that they're listening um, to you and doing things because they're planning on controlling later. Uh, the pack coach says that is very covert way of controlling, trying to please someone. Um, so they're agreeing with you. Uh, teacher of hope is here, sends you love, and I think that's the peace sign. I think you got the peace sign today, Darlene. That's pretty cool. That's Somebody great. sending, sending okay. love your way. I'm going to read some other things on the screen real quick before I get to my next uh, point or uh, question. Um, the faith, oh, excuse me, face, oh, excuse me, facet seeker says the little voice pushes away the gut feeling for a bunch of reasons, but until you really know a narcissist, it's impossible to recognize it for what it is. Um, if someone makes you uncomfortable, listen uh, to that, she's saying. Any thoughts on what uh, she put in uh, the, the chat comments for you there? I think she's agreeing with me. So yes. it doesn't have to be a narcissist. It could be anyone who's controlling or <clears throat> an addict and not not just narcissists this is a general statement if someone is right. moving faster than if they're ignoring your boundaries so you're not and don't don't start see a lot of codependents and people say well maybe it's me maybe i'm too this or i'm too that no well right. you're gonna have to find someone who's compatible with you you don't need to change who you are <laughs> is it, right don't don't try to force that that's that round peg into your square boundaries. And by uh, right? You know, you know, codependents can manipulate with pleasing. The person yes. will say, please until control later. Well, going along and not speaking up because you don't want to lose a state or something. And then uh, after you feel more comfortable, then you get more honest about you know, well, I'm really looking to get married and have children. Or something. Yeah, yeah. M months later, years later, going, and you should have said that at the beginning, right? Stuck to yeah, your boundaries. I, I happen to be, you know, five years older than myself. <laughs> <laughs> so I should, so you're telling me I shouldn't be wearing a wig if, if that's the case <laughs> and then pull it off and go like, oh, by the way, I'm really bald. Okay, so um, I, I got somebody else has something here and I don't want to ignore them. 
so uh, confront, I guess that is, or comfort. Oh, uh, some people, according to Share Unbound, she's here, and she's saying people get comfort uh, comfortable in chaos is essentially what she's saying. Uh, we can get comfortable with the chaos, and actually we need to maybe, well, like you said, uh, speak up or, or do something about it. Well, I think often that's, there's another phrase that's a, that's a good phrase, comfort with chaos. Um, I always heard it becoming addicted to melodrama. Oh, okay, that's a good one. I haven't heard that one. That's good. If you grow, okay. if you grow up in a, a home with an yeah. addict or an alcoholic, yeah. Or kind of, you know, a lot of conflict. Uh, Dra drama queen, gossip, drama, all that. Whatever that. You're used to that. And get bored. Get bored when it's peaceful and quiet. Can you be quiet with yourself? So yeah, blowing yeah. down your nervous system, so that when you're somebody. Um, I remember once I went out with somebody, and he said. You're, I don't remember, he was like criticizing me because I was too chill or something too. And he was very intense. And uh, so he didn't think we were a good match, which was fine. And then I found out like, you know, a month later he committed suicide. So <sighs> sadly. Whoa. So you, Man. If you're really comfortable, if you're comfortable being yourself, then you will notice when someone is not being real. Yeah, I agree. It's, um, it kind of starts, it begins within. So the more you can be comfortable in your own body and your own skin and be real, then, you know, that might even throw off a narcissist. They might realize that you're not manipulable. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, uh, some really good information you gave us. We have actually gone 33 minutes and I have learned so much from you. I knew this was going to happen. I have a couple of more things for you. Here we go. I'm going to say a word. You've already touched on it. You beat me to the punch. But if you can, as, uh, I don't know, succinct and briefly as you would like to, give the audience an opportunity to understand from you what gaslighting means. Okay. So it comes from a movie uh, called Gaslight. And uh, it's, um, it's a wonderful movie. If you haven't seen it, it's a classic. Uh, a lot of people think like if, let's say, your partner cheats on you and then lies about it, that that's gaslighting. Um, gaslighting is more specific. It's when it's intentional, trying to make you doubt your perceptions. And uh, it's, it's usually, it's not just one time. It's a, it's a whole agenda to do that. So, and uh, it's very insidious to keep mm. first, uh. oh, I didn't say that. And then. Mm -hmm. Are you crazy? You know, why would you think that? So then they start mm -hmm. their thinking. So it's uh, could be very damaging. Um, and I have a blog called Gaslighting 101. Okay. Signs, symptoms, and recovery. So um, the movie, by the way, was with Ingrid Bergman and Charles Boyer. Yeah. Really great movie. So yeah, you 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 were too young to remember that. You probably had to go to the library and find it, huh? I was there. So I saw it. So. Deliberate <laughs> manipulation. So it's deliberate. Deliberate. So I mean, it's a calculated. It's not just, oh no, I didn't. I you know, I wasn't talking to that person like on my phone. <laughs> so, uh, not, even uh, though, even though that happens. People can still find themselves in love with a gaslighter, is what you're saying. Oh, sure. Well, wow. Of course, they because they don't know that they're being gaslit. So, yeah. If a person finds out that they're being gaslit, Darlene, will they also find out, and here's a word, feel free to explain what this word means for those who may have never heard it before and going to hear it for the first time, then a person finds out that they're being gaslit. Then what is triangulation then? Oh, that's really different. Okay. So tri triangulation. Did somebody ask that question? Uh, yes. That's mine. Okay. This one, these are mine. Okay. <laughs> Psychological term. It has nothing to do with narcissism. Got so it. relationships, when instead of two people, 
you bring in a third. Mm -hmm. Could be uh, a couple has intimacy issues because one of the parent is is very close with the child, and so maybe the bonding is more with the child than with the parent with the spouse. Mm -hmm. It could be not just um, a person; it could be an activity. So maybe you have a husband that's a workaholic, and so he's or or a wife that's a, you know a, a foodaholic or something, an overeater. So mm -hmm. the attention is more on their addiction than it is on the relation. In fact, that third is um, a distraction because the, the intimacy is too threatening. So it comes back mm -hmm. comfort with intimacy. Can you just be really, and I have a lot of blogs on intimacy. I have one called your intimacy index to see like um, how capable of you are of intimate, real intimacy. Um, Codependents a lot of times want to talk about uh, their problems or listen to their partner or talk about their past. Well, that's one level of intimacy, but real intimacy means being honest who you are in the moment in relation to that person. So saying like, oh, right now I'm feeling, um, what you're saying is I'm feeling sad or I'm feeling um, angry about what you just said or I'm feeling like pulling away. I mean. That takes courage to be able to say, actually know yourself and then be assertive enough to say it and, mm -hmm. and be able to say that in the moment. So, <clears throat> but if you bring in something else, okay, oh, let's watch TV. So now you're uh, going to <laughs> Netflix or television, um, but it's right. usually, typically it's another person, but it could be an addiction or some other activity that gets in the way. And that gets in the that gets in the way of the intimacy uh, that or of a healthy relationship because right. now one or even both, but one person is going to an addiction or some other thing or person uh, to give attention because they're fearing the intimacy or they may not have enough courage then to speak up. Well, it could be that, or it could be their partner is ignoring them. So oh, okay, you don't have enough intimacy in your marriage, and so then you cheat. So you bring in. Some mm -hmm. Correct. Right. Have it front your spouse and say, "Look, uh, we need to go to counseling. This isn't working. Right. Uh, I'm not getting enough of my needs met from you. Maybe you tried. Maybe you got raged at uh, or put down. And right, to right. Help on having to how to confront that person rather than go outside the relationship. Right. So why, the triangle. I'm sorry. Go ahead. What was that? Yeah, why sometimes those affairs don't work out. Because let's say you get divorced, and then you, and then you have the same problem with the, oh yeah, the same with the, with the other person, with the other person, the intimacy just keeps chasing the lack of intimacy and courage to really talk about and solve things uh, never gets solved because what triangulation and that becomes a, a constant part of a relationship wherever they go instead okay. of dealing with dealing with something. Yeah. Um, By the way, on that subject of intimacy, narcissists don't want to be intimate because it means being authentic, which they can't be and being vulnerable. So they think all that is weak and they want to have power. They want to have power over you. So they have to be the top dog. And, you know, to be intimate, you have to be real and vulnerable. And they see that as weak and flawed. So that and they're I, not I, feeling so. Yeah. I seriously want to get into that with you. I just know we're not going to do it today, but that is going to be for, for October. Because that is a subject, I have not done a show on that yet, but I have had people ask me about why don't you do a show on that, the intimacy uh, with a narc and how they, as you just said, um, and I've come to learn, that's not something they really want to do. Uh, that vulnerability uh, of, because that would expose them then um, and their wounds or what? How does that work? Just yeah, real quick. There's a lot of shame under. Okay, of shame. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, I got I got I got to ask you this question. Here we go. Here's one of the questions. Uh, what keeps me from moving forward from narcissistic abuse? What keeps me from moving forward? So a person has come to understand what it is and the red flags, gaslighting, and even if they've been exposed to triangulation and other things. And now they want to move forward. Darlene, what keeps them where they just feel like they're not moving forward or away from narcissistic people and abuse? Well, there's a lot of steps, okay? And if you accomplish these steps, the narcissist might leave you. <laughs> so
So. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So are you saying these are steps that should be taken so the narcissist can move on themselves, which is much easier, or are these are steps? I mean, if you start overcoming your uh, grow as a person and okay. start to value yourself. Okay. Um, the first thing you have to do is detach. So they teach you that in 12-step programs and like Al-Anon and, and CODA. Um, and I have 14 tips to letting go on my website. 14. 14 tips on your website. Right. Okay, so. Yeah, if they sign up. It's and, yeah, and I also have a blog on why it's hard to uh, leave, an, uh, leave an abuser. So there are a lot of reasons. So first, you have to feel worthy. Just knowing it intellectually may not be. It's 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 very important to be able to name it. I was in an abusive relationship, and I didn't like it, but I didn't even know I was being abused. I didn't know that word. And then wow. I took a class on assertiveness, and then I came back and said, that's abusive. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You took a class. I'm just going to ask, yeah. what year did you take the class? And this, and your, the light bulb went on. What year was that? I don't remember. It was probably 40 years ago or something. <laughs> okay. And so, so how could that possibly be? You would have only been two at the time. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So you took a class on assertiveness, and well, that's when you found out that, wait a minute, I'm suffering through abuse. Yeah, people didn't talk about it much then. I mean, the word trauma wasn't even, you know, con people didn't talk about intimacy, uh, PTSD, trauma. Everything is moving much more faster because, you know, people are learning and we're sharing. And, of course, the Internet is uh, yeah. actually, um, exploding and teaching people. Mm -hmm. All that information wasn't out there. So I'm, I'm very happy to, s to spread what I teach, what I've learned. So, yeah, so you have to be able to recognize it. And then um, it's important to tune in and know how you feel. And mm -hmm. then you feel worthy of, of being loved and treated well. So most people with a narcissist, if they didn't have low self-worth to begin with, by the time they're hang around for a long enough time, their self-esteem and self-worth is going to plummet from all that abuse. So and if you grew up with uh, put-downs and things like that, you start off kind of behind the eight ball. So you have yeah. to feel worthy of it. And then the next thing, you have to um, learn to be assertive. I took that class, and I have an ebook and a webinar on how to be assertive. And you, so you have to know the words. And then you have, to have a, you have to feel that you have a right to be treated well. Good, so, good. Yeah. Well, I have to like, uh, make a list of the, your, their rights and then just say them forcefully. Like, mm. I have a right to respect. And I start, love it. They start giggling. I mean, it's <laughs> embarrassing to them. So uh, feeling like you really have a right to be treated well. And, and then you have the words. And then the next level is courage, okay, okay. to speak out. And the thing is that, and I have another blog on do's and don'ts with uh, confronting abuse. So most people try to defend themselves, explain nag, attack the abuser, none yeah, of them yeah. kind of productive, pleading, yeah. just the mm -hmm. look at them. So you have to be very concise and constructive in what you say. And that's what I put in my, my ebook on dealing with the narcissist. So there's a lot of steps involved and then setting boundaries. And I think of boundaries as like a graduate course of assertiveness. So first you have <laughs> I, I like that. I like that. It's very hard. To, can't, you can't just, you know, tell people to not do something or stop doing something when you're so afraid of them and you don't really have the words. So uh, a lot of times people will ask questions. They'll say, why are you treating me like that? Well, you don't want to ask a question. You, you make a statement and okay. it has to be very concise. So, so if a person makes a statement, I'm just going to now that you, oh. you touched on that. What would be, for an example, let's say somebody, again, we're talking to maybe people who are not familiar with narcissism. Yeah. Let's, how would you make a statement? Okay. What would it kind of, yeah, example? For, for instance, um, a narcissist will typically blame you for whatever. They whatever, yeah. You know, or they're late for something. So you just say, 
Well, I don't take responsibility for that. <laughs> That's good. And then they'll yeah. throw out, they don't know what to say, you know, because they want an argument. Or you say... Um, I like that. I, they criticize, you know, something about your looks or something you did. <laughs> they well, I don't see it that way, or I disagree. That's a boundary. I mean, there are other boundaries where you say stop, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, don't get any closer or don't talk to me that way in that tone of voice. But getting back to the question about leaving, okay? So the mm -hmm. first is detaching. So you have to learn not to react to all their garbage, okay? And their, their personality, their projections, their shaming, uh, all of their stuff. And, and not take any of it personally. There's a, um, an acronym like uh, Q-tip. Quit taking it personally, okay? Okay, I got to write that down. <laughs> okay, go ahead. That's a good one. Love it. Okay, go ahead. I'm listening. So, so you don't react. They maybe try to provoke you. And you say, oh, you know what? That's, I'll think about it. And you walk away. When you argue with them, you lose, okay? And narcissists like conflict, and they like to provoke you and dump all of their negative feelings on you. You keep doing that, and then they have to look, they have to deal with themselves. And uh, so detaching, I have a blog on letting go with love. There's a whole chapter on detaching and codependency for dummies. And uh, you're not going to change. If you change, people try to change a narcissist. If you change yourself, the narcissist will change. Um, they may not overcome their narcissism, but they'll change and the relationship will change. You will change the, I have another one, changing the dynamics in an abusive relationship. So oh, okay. is thing. setting bound, building your self-esteem, learning to be assertive, setting your boundaries. I have a client who is with a very difficult abusive, raging, covert narcissist, and they can be the hardest to deal with. And by coaching and her own work and working together for over a year and they have children together and she was very afraid of a, a high conflict divorce so now he's he's wanting a divorce and it's all amicable it's like wow you know how it should be and she's like you're relieved so um, wow because she was just but she kept um she was not going taking the bait every time he would try to bait her mm -hmm. and then, don't take the bait don't take the bait is what you're saying don't take the bait so eventually you know narcissists have these needs for they're called their their supply and i have another mm -hmm. one what is narcissistic supply so they have needs for adoration or, or i mean admiration or they prefer mm -hmm. yeah i was gonna say they probably prefer the first one but yeah, yeah. right and <laughs> yeah so Wor worship, they, worship, oh, worship should be the word that we really want to use because that's what they really want. They want your attention to marry you. They need somebody to project on all of their negativities, negativity, someone to get angry at. So if you stop reacting and if you stop giving them all that attention and yeah. if you stop like fawning over them and saying, thinking how wonderful they are, they're going to want it somewhere else. So if you, you know, they may go outside the relationship. So, you know, or they may just want to leave. So the, then they will, you'll see them fall apart. It's almost like, you know, the wicked witch in The Wizard of Oz. The melting, start yeah. melting. They'll melt into a puddle because they need that for their ego to survive. It's, it's like, it's a drug for them. It's life or death. They really need those supplies and they'll turn into it a... And if we're not careful, we're giving them that supply. But once we implement some of the steps, especially from your, your blog and your ebook and your website, we're going to be not giving them that and falling for the bait. And they're going to have to do something. They got to go somewhere to get it if they're not getting it from us. That's right. And now they put themselves in a position, whether it be through the marriage or work or whatever it may be, family relationship, they're going to kind of give the they would give us some space or they would go their own way but um okay so i'm gonna ask this here's one of my questions i got another one for you uh that was from the audience but i here's one i gotta ask then what is gray rock all about then okay so i have a blog on gray rock too okay. so, listen do you not have a blog on anything 
You have a blog on how to make uh, meatloaf too? Because I could use that one because I haven't. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, how to detach from a meathead. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> so. No comment. Uh, okay, gray rock is when you just kind of no reaction at all. So right. that's fine if you're up to this, but be careful because you're, you know, I, I, and one of the warnings I have is, well, there's two basically. And I, I my, uh, my blog talks about the risks and the rewards of going gray, gray rock. So it might be mm -hmm. what I'm talking about, but if you're not, if you don't really want to leave the relationship, your partner might go elsewhere. If you just, okay, that's one. The other thing is I caution people not to shut down to their feelings. You don't want to go numb because your feelings are your guide. So, you know, be careful. Talk to someone. Journal. Be sure that you're not numbing to yourself. It's not just numbing to the narcissist. And, Which is, okay, so I have to ask this question then because I've never really thought about that. And I've never had anybody out of all the people that have been on the show that say what you just said, to make sure not to numb ourselves, that we need to talk to somebody. Because so you're saying we can become so numb that we're just on autopilot about life. And yeah. OK, yeah. got it. All right. And people do that with an abuser just to survive. You start to if you're around abuse long enough or with an addict and maybe maybe this happened in your childhood. Mm -hmm. right. Denial of feelings and needs is a symptom of codependency. Okay. Uh, yeah, and I just want to point out, if you go gray rock or do the things that I said about detachment, you can expect abuse to escalate. Mm. Try to provoke you. Mm -hmm. That's why it's hard to do on your own. You really need to be maybe working with a sponsor in CODA, or with a therapist or something. To, to keep you from falling back because it's like training a, a toddler mm -hmm. <laughs> animal. It's like you let them, when you're tired and you, um, you let down your guard, then they know that they won, they got in. Uh, so we have to make sure that we are surrounded by people who are supporting us and can work with us, especially with our emotions, so that we don't fall into that habit of thinking that uh, we can make it on our own. And there we go back again, which leads to the next one. Um, we're nearing the end of our show. We've gone 54 minutes. Uh, so everyone, I am going to go really quick on some things. So uh, if you want more, you have to go to uh, Darlene's page, her Instagram page, Darlene Lancer LMFT. Uh, Darlene Lancer LMFT. Like, comment, share, follow her page. Uh, we're going to do another show on October 2nd. Uh, this was to just to be a brief moment to let everyone know, at least I wanted to make sure, as I told Darlene, that she is indeed back on Instagram. I want everyone, please, to go show support. If you can follow the page while we're doing the show, just go ahead and let us know that. Type that in the uh, comments that you're following her page. A few of you have done that already. I really appreciate it. So um, here we go. Last part of the show. If you got a question for her, you might as well throw it in now or save it for October 2nd, or you can talk with her on her page. I want to uh, do this on the screen. Uh, this is what you got. Um, when it comes to triangulation in regards to narcissism is when you, you let, uh, say, your husband say other, let me see, hold on, other way on you place. Okay, you got me there. I can't read that one. You got me, Pat Coach. Uh the symptoms of a narcissist? Oh, that's a good one. I didn't have that one. Yep. Go ahead. So, symptoms of a narcissist. So, I'm sorry I butchered that question there, uh, my friend. Uh, Pat Coach, uh, I'll, I'll get to something uh, if you want to put something else in. Oh, uh, here's an update. Um, Darlene, Sue1515. She just clicked that she's following you now. So you got oh, another follower in, in real time. Uh, but go ahead. Yes, uh, Pat Coach says, uh, that is very dangerous to become numb. So we need to avoid that when we're doing gray rock. Um, uh, Sabine Wonder Woman says, thank you for being here too. Look forward to you being on the show soon. She says, this is very informative, Darlene. 
So she appreciates you doing that. Okay. You said you're going to tell us what before we go? What was that you just mentioned? Well, a lot of people call their partner uh, a narcissist because she's selfish or something like that, but uh, that's not, or, or, or they rage, but that's not part of the symptoms of the mm -hmm. diagnostic code. So I wanted to be clear uh, before you start labeling someone a narcissist. Although mm -hmm. at the same time I want to say labels don't really matter if you think you're being abused. <laughs> they don't. Okay. About the labels and just, you know, read my literature and, and learn how to protect yourself. Get okay. It. Got it. You were going to say, how did, did you say diagnose? Or, or, what would you say? What is it again? Uh, a diagnosis. Okay. So first of all, there's um, several pre-requirements. One is that they lack empathy. Mm -hmm. And we mentioned the need for admiration. And the, the next is a grandiose personality. So I want to just make a distinction because there's something called the grandiose or exhibitionistic narcissist. And those are people like in politics and film uh, mm -hmm. that you would see. But there's also covert narcissists. They also have grandiosity, but it's hidden. So they think um, he recognizes my greatness. So they don't necessarily brag about it and boast and are, are they're more introverted and just think feel sorry for themselves that they never made it in film or they never were uh, you know their art isn't being recognized or yeah. what their skill or something. So those are the three basic they have to meet those three requirements okay and then they have to meet um five altogether and here's some of the others and so that um they think that they're special mm -hmm. it only be um understood or associate with special people or high standards wow. so they want to okay. sell themselves with people from maybe the best schools or the entertainment field or, you mm -hmm. know, public figures or wealthy people, whatever in their mind is high status. Um, mm -hmm. And this is part of their entitlement. So then they expect, this is actually another symptom, but they usually go together. They expect special treatment. So they will maybe cut in line and think that um, I had one client who, uh, he had a, a batch of speeding tickets, but he never went to court. He thought that the law was wrong, that it shouldn't apply to him. <laughs> <laughs> until the court came for, until the court came to him. <laughs> what happened, but I don't remember. Oh, but uh, so he thought really he was above the law or, you know, I had a nar narcissistic brother who thought that the plane should wait for him. Those kind oh, of wow. <laughs> wow. So, and, you know, and then they expect you really to treat them as special and that your, your needs don't matter, but theirs do. Uh, another symptom is envy. So typically narcissists will be envious of others because they want to be the best. So, uh, and, the, and their envy is filled with, uh, with anger. Uh, mm -hmm. If they're uh, really um, a malignant narcissist or often sometimes perfectionistic narcissists, they will try to take down anyone that their competition. So wow. take it to an extreme. And to, uh, but they will also, if someone uh, criticize them, criticizes them, they'll project their own envy and think, well, that person's just envious of me. There's nothing wrong <laughs> with them. envious. They want what I have. I didn't do anything wrong. They're just jealous and envious. Um, and then uh, they exploit other people. So they might exploit them financially, sexually, take an unfair advantage of people, um, or maybe use their work product, plagiarize, things like that. Or in a work situation, they may take credit for your work. And drag mm -hmm. um, so that's exploitation. And then a real uh, typical one that's easy to spot is arrogance. So they feel better than uh, groups of people, uh, certain uh, minorities or racism or just just anybody, you know, their colleagues, mm -hmm. their friends, 
their um, fellow uh, work in their workplace. They just feel like they're the best and everyone is beneath them. And mm. you fall into that category too. Um, so those are, um, I think those are. Uh, <laughs> that, just, that's, five, that's five things right there. That, that's, uh, in addition to the three I mentioned. So got they it. Either have uh, dreams of success and uh, they fantasize about success. You might go out with someone they will tell you all their great plans and dreams. And then you mm -hmm. find out that none of it is a reality. Or they're just feeling they exaggerate who they are and they boast about their talents and achievements. Um, and then they require excessive admiration. You, you know, you should look up to them and always be admiring them. So altogether, there's about nine, but they have to have those three crucial ones and at least two more. And so we're looking at someone who gives the impression that they have it together or that they did this or that. But once someone spends time with them, they find out that it's not true, that well, they really don't have those talents or own that property or, all, you know, a number of things. Maybe. I mean, some narcissists are very <laughs> too. So, you know, that... It could also be true, but usually they end up sabotaging their, their personality flaws. End up, I mean, um, Steve Jobs was a narcissist and he was very successful, right? Yeah, very. That's an understatement. Very successful. Uh, so, uh, you've got people agreeing with you here on the screen, uh, along with the stream of hearts that have been going across the stream, uh, screen. Uh, and we're not always talking baby hearts. You've been getting some nice big fat hearts people have been giving you because they agree with you. Uh, yeah. uh, they, you've got <laughs> you've got uh, leave no contact go ghost uh, leave underscore no underscore contact underscore go underscore ghost Darlene I just want you to know I have to do that every time I say their name she's such a sweet person she's saying to you uh, that the the person try, yeah do you see that tried to annihilate uh, her oh, and the other and and share unbound who will be coming on the show next week. She says the exploitation is horrific. So they are agreeing with you a thousand percent. Well, you know, not, but, you know, I want to just mention that a lot of what you hear on the Internet is, and, and probably these partners, were malignant narcissists, like very extreme. So there are narcissists, like, I just want to point out that can stay married for years and they're not that extreme. They might just have, you know, four, three or four traits. And yeah. It's a continuum. So not everybody else is that uh, aggressive or malicious. So the more um, malicious they are, the more aggressive, the more severe the narcissism. So okay. So the more the more malicious, malicious you said, yeah. and aggressive. Yeah. And so with the more the more malice they are, they start to be more sociopathic. So somebody could be a sociopath and a narcissist. So I'm not okay, that just that just sounds scary. That just sounds scary, but we'll we'll leave that for another day. That sounds like you should run. It's just the combination <laughs> alone. <laughs> you need to pack your stuff and get, get out of there. Yeah, like uh, it's, like in their childhood, that they dismembered a pet. <laughs> like a really bad horse. That's like okay, if my my do my daughters or or if they're still listening or listening. I'm telling you, if they if they do if they have somebody like that, I am taking a U-Haul truck. I'm pulling it up there when he's gone, and I'm telling I'm dragging her out of there because that just sounds bad. I, I've got okay, so there's another. Go ahead. When I was a kid, I well don't I tell have, me don't tell me you dismembered. <laughs> don't, don't, you, now you're gonna scare me, Darlene. I love you so much. Don't do that. I've got two of your books here in my house, one for each daughter, but go ahead. No, no, no I wasn't going to say that. My, my brother, who became a doctor, he dissected a <laughs> gopher, a dead gopher. It was a dead gopher. <laughs> he later became a doctor. <laughs> is that the one you said is narcissistic? Yeah, he is. But well, he's, he's obviously a very good doctor, but very envious of all the other doctors. <laughs> So. You his assistant. Okay. Well, well, maybe. So you're saying he's not like the Doctor Welby type of doctor? No, I or, went or, the gopher. I went and got the fed. And you went and got the gopher. Oh, 
So you handled dead gophers before? Huh? You no, handled I, dead gophers before? I don't think I handled it. Although we put it, we put it in the kitchen and freaked my mother out. So, <laughs> kind of children are you that you would put it in the kitchen? <laughs> it was outside and dead. And you brought it into the house, into the kitchen where the normal dead food is. You brought that dead animal in as food. Well, I'm I, not gonna. His, I think his goal was to freak out our mother. So I think you probably did. Did you? <laughs> she said. Yes. Yeah, Okay. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. Mission. Okay, well, everybody, you I, learned a little bit about Darlene you never you never thought you would find out about. My cat used to catch gophers. We had a lot of gophers, and my cat used to catch them all the time. So he decided to, well, he was a, yeah. so, you know, he had okay. in his bedroom and an alligator in the bathtub. So he was really into zoology. But he became a doctor. So he treats his patients like he's still in zoology, maybe? So, no, okay, I don't know. I'm going to leave that alone. Okay, here we go. Um, I've got this for you. Re now, real quick, I'm just going to throw this out to you as short as you, as short as you want to say. When you hear the word, excuse me, the two words, when you hear these two words together, feel free to explain uh, as briefly as you like before we have to go. No contact. What does that mean when you hear the term no con are the two words no contact exactly what it says and it got it. <laughs> it's another you're the you know what you're the best at giving the briefest answers okay go ahead yeah but that would also include in my opinion not looking at the person's social media it's not okay. just you know not texting or talking or or seeing them face to face but you don't want to be you know snooping on their social yeah. media and things like that, because that's just going to bring you in and remind you and, and hearing the person's voice, seeing their picture is going to stimulate your um, all your feelings all over again if you're trying to get over someone. And by the way, I have logs on recovery from breakups. Okay. Tell me, I'll send you like 15 additional tips on uh, recovering from a breakup and uh, this consensus of uh, therapists say, like, although it's painful in the short term, like no contact yeah. is uh, the best thing. It doesn't have That's to be. It could be with anybody that you're trying to get over. So it's hard if you. That is, that is the most effective and best way to go based upon what you're saying. The consensus amongst therapists is to go no contact, even though in the short run, excuse me, in the short term, it, it could have a, an effect in the long run. It's going to be the most beneficial thing is what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, I guess there's some exceptions. I'm not talking about a narcissist, someone abusive, but if you're, if you need some closure with someone who's not a narcissist and maybe, mm -hmm. maybe that would clarify things for you. But right. definitely, uh, and I have also a, a audio seminar you can get on breakup recovery that people find helpful. Okay. Uh, last two points, excuse me, <clears throat> last two points on our Saturday open session discussion with the wonderful and lovely Darlene Lancer. Darlene Lancer LMFT is the um, Instagram you need to go to. And the website is, as, as I try to pull this off the top of my head, that's not going to happen. So I'm going to do this. The website is, oh, look, it's not here on this paper. It's uh What's codependency? Tell me what it is. I just went blank. What is the website again so people can go to your website? What is codependency.com? That's what it is. What is codependency.com? Uh, two things here. You mentioned the word recovery just a moment ago. Yep. In your own words, for everyone to get a better understanding of how Darlene sees it, what does that word recovery mean to you when it comes to dealing with a narcissist? Because a lot of people use it, the word recovery. When they talk about a narcissist, what does it mean to recover from a narcissist based upon your blogs and your website and other things in your publications? How could you describe recovery so someone has a better idea of what it means to recover from narcissistic abuse? Well, I think of it not just in terms of recovering from uh, a relationship with a narcissist because it's broader. Mm -hmm. than okay. so you have self-worth and self-esteem, which, you know whether you were with a narcissist or not, uh, you know, that's something to 
recover? Uh, you're re basically you're recovering yourself. Oh, uh, wow. Dependency is because of the lost self. So uh, you're able to be assertive and have boundaries. And that is, um, you know, saying, asking for your needs, speaking your feelings. And along with that is being connected to yourself. So you're able to do that. And so I also look for somebody who is uh, integrated. So their words and actions and beliefs and feelings all match. So you're not, you're authentic in other words. So you're able to be real and you're able to speak your truth. Um, and that allows you to, another criteria is to be intimate. Earlier, mm. I about the courage to be intimate. Where you have to know yourself, you have to value yourself, you have to be able to be assertive, you have to have the courage to do that, you have to have enough self-esteem to be honest. So mm -hmm. being assertive, having self-esteem, um, valuing your needs and feelings and wants, and and being integrated. So you walk your talk and you, you're authentic and you, then the consequences you're able to be, to be intimate. And you know, uh, another aspect of recovery is then you're really free to express, uh, explore your passions. Oh. I think of empowerment as self-esteem in action. So now wow. whatever you wanna do, you have efficacy and you're yeah then take action on it into the world and yeah. whatever your project is or you know whatever you want to do um that you yeah. create your life you're the author of your life you're not subordinate yeah. to somebody else that's telling you what to do now mm -hmm. you you have more narcissism you have, <laughs> so you're able to be you know just like we talked at the beginning you might mm -hmm. admire the narcissist who's decisive and takes action and uh, you know makes things happen well now you're able to do that it's not with arrogance or that you uh, think you're better or the best you just have healthy narcissism so yeah, you correct so so we've got a pretty good foundation of who we are and uh, where we're going in a better understanding uh, of what recovery means based upon what you said. But I love that part that you mentioned. A person can then start to discover their passion. Uh, there, so it's like our creativity can really come out then. It will. Uh, and, and like you said, we'll have a healthy narcissism, a, a healthy respect for ourselves uh, with boundaries. But if not, then we're leaning on someone else. Because you said then we will become our own author of our story. Uh, instead of leaning on someone else to validate and to prop us up, uh, you're amazing, darling. Well, that's you're a, really a, you're amazing. Thank you for bringing that up. What? What were you going to say? That's really overcoming codependency. And the slideshow on my website. That's the last slide. Yeah. Like living your passion. Yeah, I saw that. That's pretty neat. The slideshow. If you haven't seen it, everybody, you, you got to go check it out. And uh, uh, go ahead, please, darling. Well, that's it. And if you go to my website, please uh, sign up and join. Uh, I'm mailing this so you'll get my monthly blog. There you go. There you go. Everybody, please like, comment, and share her Instagram page. Uh, you're on Facebook, too, I think, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, There's right. Facebook. Let me uh, just point out something. On Instagram, they don't let me put links for all the posts. But if you... Yeah. Twitter or Facebook, there's all the live links, hot links to all the articles and yes. information. Okay, so Twitter, uh, Facebook, of course, Instagram, um, YouTube as well. She has uh, ebooks. Uh, I think you highlighted to me like six ninety five or something like that. Uh, you've got uh, an upcoming book uh, dealing with narcissists uh, as well. Um, dating, oh. loving, no, dating, loving, and leaving. I think that's what it is. Or, right. Go ahead. You were going to say? Yeah, Dealing with a Narcissist is the current one, and it's an e-book. Yeah. Okay, that's the e-book. Um, you have over 200 blogs. Uh, you have a blog uh, that deals with, and again, correct me if I get any of this wrong, that deals with the daughters of narcissistic mothers. 
and sons of narcissistic, right? Mothers? Mothers and fathers. And, and fathers, right? Okay. okay, that's good. Okay, that's available as well. You have webinars that are for sale, audio files. Uh, of course, you have whatiscodependency.com, and uh, you also have uh, another website, which was what again? You have two websites. You have that one, and you have another one. DarleneLancer.com. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to make sure if I got everything here that uh, I wanted to make note of. Uh, listen, you got to you got to go to her website. You got to take a look at the 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 video that's there, everybody. Some of you that are coming in right now, uh, I just want to let you know what I have. Uh, requested of uh, those of you who are regularly watchers of this show and follow the guests that come on today, open session Saturday. I do these every blue moon. Normally it's the coach Jess show that uh, we produce here on Narc Abuse TV network. Uh, she will be back next week. I am asking everyone, please. Some of you have done it and uh, hold on. <laughs> After all of you who have already done this, I'm asking everyone to follow or click to follow Darlene's page. She is now back on Instagram. So authentically, authentically, Shug is here. Dexter is uh, here as well. Uh, Beat, uh, see, Varga is here. Of course, uh, many of you are here. Liz, uh, 0811, and others. Please uh, click on it, even as we speak, if you want to go to her page uh, or you're able to do so or after the show. Follow Darlene's page and show her some support. You dropped a lot of knowledge today, Darlene. You you helped a, you helped a lot. Uh, everybody enjoyed it. Uh, I have I have one thing to ask you as the hearts go across the screen. Everybody's uh, showing their love for you for being here. Man, look at those things go. So uh, I do want to tell you this, and not, not rather, I do want to ask you this. One question that I had, I had to save this question. I wanted to save it for last. The question was, how can, this is for you, Darlene, how can your books help me be narc-free was the question that I had. Okay. So there's exercises in all of the books. Um, codependency for Dummies and Conquering Shame and Codependency, one-third of that book is exercises. Okay. Uh, and uh, my all the other e-books are workbooks. So... You know, it's a lot of people have trouble um, disciplining themselves to do that. Mm -hmm. And I encourage you to join a, a 12 step program, get some therapy. Uh, but if you do that, I mean, people write me from all over the world that it like it changed their life or it helped them their marriage. Um, so I know it works because just read on, on my website or on Amazon the reviews and people seem to be benefiting a lot from them and changing. So hey, your reviews are, are very, very good. You already know that, but I am telling everybody, if you have not uh, stopped by, or this is your first time getting a chance to meet Darlene and you don't know about uh, codependency for dummies and a number of other uh, things that she, she does, her two paperback books uh, are out there on my page as well. And you will see a number of other things coming uh, from Darlene uh, that I will post so that you will use, uh, as you always do, Narc Abuse TV Network as a resource for you to reach out to some of the people we put on uh, who are always positive, very informative, and like Darlene, great sense of humor. Darlene has a great sense of humor. I just I want you guys to know that. Uh, I had I had fun doing the show prep with you. That was very, that was very fun. Uh, I really appreciate it. What, what were you going to say? What? Yeah, another thing that could be very helpful is I have a self-love meditation. Okay. I have a new one called a soul alignment meditation. So, mm -hmm. um, and I've gotten a lot of wonderful feedback on these. Like, if you listen to them, it'll help you talk to yourself in a more loving way, and that'll help overcome shame and raise your self-esteem. So if you listen to them a, a few times, you'll start to uh, adopt some of the language that you can talk to yourself in a gentler, more loving way. Because the problem is you can leave an abuser, and guess what? Mm -hmm. Worst abuser is yourself. So you still lose. Yeah. So you have to heal on the inside, and then you want to attract another abuser. So. Right. That's really good. We have gone, Darlene, we were going to go 40 minutes. We have gone an hour and 21 minutes, <laughs> 21 minutes, and my legs have fell asleep. So I have to end the show, everybody. I don't want to because I loved listening to you, Darlene. I always learn something new. And I repeat, your 
books. There are two of them in our house. Uh, my daughters make sure to have them. They are my executive producers. You have, uh, do you have one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions? Somebody just asked. So I have to ask that. I look on the services page on my website. Okay, services page on her website, everybody. Uh, Darlene, um, very briefly, last few words of encouragement to everybody, and we're out of here. Last few words for everybody and some of the late bloomers that are jumping on right now. But uh, last words, because we're about to end, everybody. I see everybody coming on, but we're about to go. Go ahead, Darlene. Last words for everybody. Stop shitting on yourself. <laughs> so, you just, oh, man. I can't take you nowhere. <laughs> I can't take you out in public. It's okay. So Darlene says, make sure you carry toilet paper. That's pretty much what she's saying. <laughs> if you uh, Either that or just, kind you know, be, be kind, kind to yourself. yourself. Yes. And, you know, it's humiliating to be abused. I was in an abusive um, relationship. And, uh, but don't beat yourself up. Start yeah. to love yourself. Otherwise, you're right. a problem. So that's what I mean. Don't say you should have left or why didn't I? Or like, I should. You will when you, I mean, if you're in that relationship, you'll leave when, when, when you're ready. And if you are already out, don't beat yourself up for not leaving sooner. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Darlene. They, listen, you said that. And the hearts just kept going. So everyone's agreeing with you right now. They're saying thank you on the screen. Uh, Shara Unbound says that she's following you. She just clicked follow. Uh, Pack Coach just left instructions for everybody on how to follow, even while we're doing the show. Uh, someone, now they're telling you, you are beautiful. And thank you. And you got four, four hearts on that. That was from the Pack Coach, P-A-C Coach. Uh, Leave No Contact, who is one of our, our regulars, says to you, Exactly. Laugh out loud. She's agreeing with you just said. Really great show. Thank you so much. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to end it on that note for sure. Thank you, Darlene. We'll see you later. Love to you. Take all. care. Bye. Bye everybody. See you guys next week.